All right, we got my helper here. We are in the Northgate parking lot, which is very, very low range. To remind them about Coke. Yeah, it's true. We're over there, I got my car. My daughter's inside of it. She wanted a long time. Apparently this is a uh, product placement thing. So let's talk about settings. First off, uh, I found that this is the setting where my camera thinks this is a balanced exposure. So what I need to do is assume that this will be my high exposure and I need to go three steps darker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm then doing all the same things. I want this to be on. Uh, no, Felix. No, no, no. You can't touch the tire. That's important, isn't it? Yes. He has a soda. Uh, now we can't touch the tripod because we're going to shoot multiple angles, and we need this to function as like the solid point. But this is a really awesomely high-range photo. In fact, if I rotate, you can see the camera struggling to keep up with me, like in its own exposure. Very low range. Very high range of the daylight outside. So, it should be a really fun one. Uh, and now, so I've gone from one fourth, I went three steps darker, and that's gonna assume that that zero point is right now. And therefore, when it goes three exposure values up, it's gonna choose plus three. Otherwise, I've got all these settings pretty much the same. Two seconds, so on and so forth. Now, I need some sort of true north. And I always use like the brightest light source is my true north. So it's going to be over here. So Felix, can you stand behind me? Sure. Now what's cool about this is this is my fisheye lens. I'm going to set it to manual focus. Okay, I'm just setting my coke. Focus I'm just all the way. my coke on the ground, okay? One way or the I'm other. I'm my coke on the ground. Okay. So what's good is if you put that right in the center here, that makes sure that no one will kick it when you're going in a circle here. So I think we're ready. I'm going to change my white balance to shaded though. Actually, maybe, maybe I'm a white fluorescent light because these are here. Ah, whatever, we'll fix it in post. Okay, what's cool about this is I only need four photos. Maybe six. Maybe five. So Felix, you're always going to stay behind me and then we're going to go in a circle. Ready? Okay, ready? Here's photo number one. No, Felix, now stay behind me. Stay behind me. Because now we're going to rotate this. There. So now you... Nice. We'll grab it right now. You can hold it while we do these. But I just need you to not touch the tripod at all. Now this fisheye lens means that everything has to be like slightly behind. Okay, rotate. Now rotate with me. Now we're rotating over here. Now you can't touch the tripod once I'm shooting. Here, stay behind me. Here you go. Here you go. Come get it. Don't touch the tripod. Photo number three. And photo number four. And maybe one extra photo in this case because we have this crazy ceiling. So, uh, let's do one photo where maybe we go straight up. Like that. Now let's take a look at these photos, just so you can get a sense of like what we're dealing with here. Oh, I can't even remember how to rotate my thing now. Now arguably I didn't need my camera flipped vertically for this because these are actually ugh. Oh yeah. Now I'm starting to wonder if I didn't shoot bright enough. Yeah, I think I'm gonna redo this now, but a couple of exposures brighter. Is 
So let's start at 1 30th of a second, which is what we did. And instead we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, I'll do one for it. Really quick, I'm going to do a check on my children. Of course, what could go wrong? It's totally empty out here. It's the only place you can go for total emptiness. Yeah, they're fine. They're both playing in the car. Destroying all my stuff. Whatever, it's just stuff. So how fast, I'm locking the head. So how fast can you shoot an HDR panorama? By the way, lens cap is in my pocket. All right. So this one is going to be slightly brighter. And this time let's actually chimp. So I want my brightest photo to really feel like I got my money's worth. So that's the brightest one. I think we could still go one brighter maybe. So I'm gonna do a half second one. All right, ready. And then I rotate. Really quick chimp. Oh yeah, that's bright enough. Now number two. Now a lot of times what I like to do uh, I need to repurchase a piece of equipment, which is a USB-C to a USB mini. And that lets me control my camera with my phone. Not in a case like this where I'm actively uh, using it. But normally it works pretty good. Uh, and the benefit of that is uh, when you hack your firmware like that, you can end up shooting as many brackets as you want. So a lot of times, I'll just shoot, you know, 10 brackets, which is way more than you'll ever need at like two exposure values a time. The results of which is far more photos than I would ever, ever need. But I can just throw away things that I don't want. Let's see. Yeah. Gosh, I love the fish islands. All right, and I think that's game. All right. So that's the shooting side of how to do an HDR panorama. Number one on the HDR side, make sure everything auto is off. Make sure that your camera is the lowest possible millimeter available in your kit. And make sure you're, that you're zoomed uh, way, way out. And also that your focus is far off in the distance. Uh, what else do we need to know? Make sure your white balance is set, not auto. Make sure your, uh, what's it called? Make sure your Make sure your kids have something fun to do. Like climb around inside your car. And uh, you're gonna go for the maximum possible range. So you want stuff that is in focus, or you want stuff that's exposed at the darkest darks and the lightest lights. And I think that covers the shooting side of it. Another thing I recommend is if you're trying to do these early in the morning, do it with, uh, put your camera and your tripod in the car all set to go. And then you can just immediately take that stuff. And then as far as panoramas go, when you're rotating, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have 
uh, one third overlap so that when you stitch it on the second part of this series, you're going to be able to have something that programs can latch onto and enjoy. Anyways, that's all for now. I'm Oscar Beckler. I hope this was helpful.